Okay, and now we're on to days four, five, six, and seven. Um, day four is De Montfort's Consecration Part 2. Uh, yesterday, uh, Father Gately said that St. Louis gives two special emphasis in his teaching on Marian consecration. One, the renewal of our baptismal vows, and two, a particularly, a particularly intimate gift of ourselves to Mary. We covered the first emphasis yesterday. Now let's look at the second, beginning on by asking the question, why should we give ourselves to Mary? We should give ourselves to Mary in imitation of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. After all, didn't Jesus give himself to Mary from the moment of the Incarnation? Yes, he did. And aren't we called to imitate Christ? Yes, we are. But isn't Mary a creature? Yes, she is, but she's unique. Not only is Mary free from sin and totally conformed to God's will, but by God's will and good pleasure, as we learn from the introduction, Mary has a special role in the sanctification, in our sanctification. Therefore, we should give ourselves to the Mother of God so she can help form us into, into saints, into other Christs. We should give her our yes, but St. Louis takes it a, a step further. His yes to Mary is particularly deep and profoundly intimate gift of himself to Mary. He says, This devotion consists, then, in giving ourselves entirely to Our Lady in order to belong, belong entirely to Jesus through her. We must give her, one, our body with all its senses and its members, two, our soul with all its powers, Three, our interior or exterior goods of fortune, whether present or to come. Four, our interior and spiritual goods, which are our merits and our virtues, and our good works, past, present, and future. This fourth point is most, most interesting. By this aspect of our consecration to Mary, according to St. Louis, our gift of self to her goes even beyond what is required when people offer themselves to God through religious vows. For instance, by virtue of the vows of po poverty, chastity, and obedience, a religious sister does not give God the right to dispose of the grace of all of her good works, nor does she give up th her merits. Allow me to bring into better focus just how radical a gift of oneself this Marian consecration really is. First, in regard to others, if we give Mary the right to dispose of the graces of our good works, then this means we cannot unconditionally apply such graces to whom we choose. So, for instance, if I make it such an offering to Mary, I cannot insist that the graces from a sickness I am offering up go to the person I want them to apply to. Second, in regard to ourselves, if we consecrate ourselves to Mary, then when we die, we, don't, we won't get to appear before God clothed with the merits of our prayers and good works. In fact, we'll have to appear before God with empty hands, because we will have given all our merits to Mary. If the radical nature of this offering has got you worried, don't be worried. Tomorrow we'll see why this offering is not to be feared, and in fact, why it's, inc an inc it's incredibly beautiful and completely worth it. Until then, we can reflect on the second part of de Montfort's formula for Marian consecration, which, which speaks of this intimate gift of ourselves to Mary. In the presence of, the heaven, of all the heavenly court, I choose you this day for my mother and queen. I deliver and consecrate to you as your slave my body and soul, my goods, both interior and exterior, and even the value of all my good actions, past, present, and future, leaving to you the entire and full right of disposing of me and all that belongs to me, without exception, according to your good pleasure for the greater glory of God in time and eternity. And our prayer to end day four, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, living in Mary, help us to give ourselves entirely to Jesus through Mary. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All right, on to day five. Should we really give Mary everything? Part one. The second part of de Montfort's formula of consecration says that we should give Mary everything, including our interior and spiritual goods, which are our merits and our virtues. 
and our, our, and our good works, past, present, and future. Isn't this a bit too much? No, it's perfect. It's beautiful. Let's see why by learning how the offering affects others and ourselves. In regard to others, when we fully, fully consecrate ourselves to Mary, we lose the unconditional right to distribute the value of our prayers and good actions to others. In other words, we give the rights to the grace or the merit of our prayers to Mary. We're telling her, Mary, I give you the right to distribute the grace of my prayers as you see fit. Making such a gift to Mary has a big benefit. It ensures that the grace of our prayers will be used in the best way possible. It works like this. Because of her unique vantage point from heaven, and on account of her most intimate communion with her divine Son, Mary can best determine which people are in most need of our prayers. For instance, seeing some forgotten person in China about to die in despair, Mary can take the grace of our prayers and offer it up sufferings, and use it to help that dying person to trust in God and accept his mercy. Now perhaps this idea has got some of us thinking, well, that's great, I'm happy to help the dying person in China, whom I don't know, but I'd be disappointed if I therefore couldn't use the grace of my prayers and good works to help the people I do know, like my family and friends. I'm worried that if I give Mary the right to distribute the grace of my prayers and good works, then I thereby lose the right to pray for those whom I especially love even if they're less in need than other people in the world. This is a legitimate concern, but there's no need to worry. Why? For two reasons. First, Mary makes the good things we give her more perfect. In other words, she augments, increases, and purifies the spiritual gifts and merits we give her. When we give them to her, because she makes them more perfect, there's more grace and more merit to go around. St. Louis uses an unforgettable analogy to explain this. It is as if a peasant, wishing to gain the friendship of a, of, and benevolence of the king, went to the queen and presented her with a fruit, which was his whole revenue, in order that she might present it to the king. The queen, having accepted the poor little offering from the peasant, would place the fruit on a large and beautiful dish of gold, and so, on the peasant's behalf, would present it to the king. Then the fruit, however unworthy in itself to be the king's present, would become worthy of his majesty because of the dish of gold on which it rested and the person who presented it. Here's the second reason we shouldn't worry. Mary is never outdone in generosity. So if we're generous as to give her the right to distribute the grace of our prayers and good works, she'll surely be especially generous to our loved ones. In fact, she'll take even better care of our loved ones than we ourselves can. For instance, let's say one of our family members or friends is in need of prayer, and we don't know it. Well, Mary knows it, and she'll make sure that the person doesn't go without. Giving Mary the right to distribute the grace of our prayers and good works doesn't mean we can't still pray for our loved ones. We can and should pray for them. It's just that we give Mary the final say in deciding on to whom and for what purpose the grace of our prayers and good works should be applied. Remember, Mary is not outdone in generosity. She especially hears the prayers of those who have given her everything, especially the value of all of our good works. And she wants, to tell, wants us to tell her of the people and intentions we hold in our hearts. If we've given her everything, is there any doubt that she'll be generous in giving whatever good we ask for, to those who are dear to us. And the prayer for day five. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit, living in Mary, help us be generous in giving all we have to Mary. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Day six. Should we really give everything, or give Mary everything? Part two. Okay, so yesterday, we looked at how, when we fully consecrate ourselves to Mary, we give up the right to distribute the grace of our prayers and merits to others. But we saw that it works out even better in the end. Now today, we turn to ourselves. Isn't it crazy to give to Mary all the value of our good actions and prayers and so appear before God with empty hands? No, it's not crazy. Remember, Mary is not outdone in generosity. If we give her all our merits, she gives us all of hers, and that's a big deal. 
I once read a st- or Father Gately says once he read a story about a saint on earth who had a vision of heaven. In her vision, she saw the saints in heaven and their different degrees of glory. With some saints, she was astonished because they had risen so high in glory so as to be worshiping God with the seraphim, the highest choir, uh, choir of angels. Another time, I re- uh, Father Gately read a passage in the, in the diary of St. Faustina in which Faustina had similar vision of he- heaven. She related that if, if we were to see the differences among the gre- degrees in the glory of, of glory in heaven, we would willingly suffer anything on earth just to move one degree higher. After reading these testimonies, Father Gately said to himself, I not only want to go to heaven, but I want to reach the highest degrees of glory in heaven that I possibly can. There's an easy way for us to do this. We give Mary everything. We rely not on our own merits, but on hers. St. Louis explains, The Most Holy Virgin, who never lets herself out be outdone in love and liberality, seeing that we give ourselves entirely to her, meets us in the same spirit. She also gives her whole self and gives it in an unspeakable manner to him who gives all to her. She causes him to be engulfed in the abyss of her graces. She adorns him with, all, with her merits. She supports him with her power. She illuminates him with her light. She inflames him with her love. She communicates to him her vir- virtues, her humility, her faith, her purity, and the rest. In a word, as that consecrated person, person is all Mary's, so Mary is all his. So despite these consoling words, one might still be troubled and say, that's great, I'm all for having a high degree of glory in heaven, but what I'm worried about is purgatory. I'm afraid that if I give away all my merits, even to Mary, then I'll have to suffer in purgatory for a very long time. St. Louis responds, This objection, which comes from self-love and ignorance of the generosity of God and his Holy Mother, refutes itself. A fervent and generous soul who can give God all he has without reserve so that he can do nothing more, who lives only for the glory and reign of Jesus Christ through his Holy Mother and who makes an entire sacrifice of himself to bring it about, will this generous and liberal soul, I say, be more punished in the other world because it has been more liberal and more disinterested than others? Far indeed will that be from the truth. Rather, it is toward that soul that our Lord and his Holy Mother are the most liberal in this world and in the other, and in the orders of nature, grace, and glory. Okay, this settles it, and we get a gentle rebuke on top of it all. St. Louis repeats this important point. Mary is not outdone in generosity. If we are especially generous with her, then she'll be especially generous with us. And he makes another good point, the gentle rebuke. He says that, that these kinds of concerns come from self-love. So yes, we should aim high. Yes, we should have holy ambition and want to reach the higher heights of holiness. But our motive should not be self-love. Rather, it should be that we want to please God and give great glory to Him. We should keep this important point in mind when tomorrow we read about some of the awesome benefits of being consecrated to Mary. So day six... Day six is prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, living in Mary, help us to give great glory to God by giving all we have to Mary. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. All right, day seven. I'm going to see if I can make it through. A quick, easy, and secure way to holiness. For the last two days, we've learned about some beautiful benefits of being consecrated to Jesus through Mary. Benefits both to ourselves and to those who are closest to us. Today, on this final day of meditation on the teaching of St. Louis, we're going to focus on some other benefits of Marian consecration. Specifically, we're going to learn about how Marian consecration is a quick, easy, and secure way to holiness. As we read about this, we should keep in mind that the gifts of these benefits don't entitle us to just kick back and take it easy. This would be the self-love that St. Louis rebuked during yesterday's reading. Rather, when we see God's generosity in giving such a great gift as Marian consecration, we should strive all the more ardently to live it out and grow in holiness. Let's start with the quick and easy part. The way of consecration to Jesus through Mary is a quick and easy way to holiness. And what is holiness? Dying to self. And this definitely is not easy. 
Still, marrying consecration is a relatively quick and easy way along a path that, it, that by its very nature isn't easy and often takes a long time. St. Louis in- introduces this way as follows. As there are secrets of nature by which natural operations are performed more easily, in a short time and at a little cost, so also are there secrets in the order of grace by which supernatural op- operations, such as ridding ourselves of self, filling ourselves with God, and becoming perfect, are performed more, more easily. How do we follow this quick and easy way? By giving ourselves to Jesus through Mary. Mary leads us to Jesus and makes the road to holiness quick and easy, even though she doesn't take away our crosses. In fact, those are particularly beloved by Mary, those who are particularly loved, beloved by Mary, often have more crosses than others. But Mary makes the crosses sweet and light. It is quite true that the most faithful servants of the Blessed Virgin, being also her greatest favorites, receive from her the greatest graces and favors from heaven, which are crosses. But I maintain that it is also the servants of Mary who carry these crosses with more ease, more merit, and more glory. That which would, st- would stay the progress of another a thousand times over, or perhaps would make him fall, does not once stop their steps, but rather enables them t- to advance, because that good mother, all full of grace and of the unction of the Holy Spirit, prepares her servants' crosses which so mu- with so much maternal sweetness and pure love as to make them gladly acceptable, no matter how bitter they may be in themselves. It's just as a person who would not be able to eat unripe fruits would, without a great effort, which he could hardly keep up unless th- they had been preserved in sugar. We make more progress in a brief period of submission to and dependence on Mary than in whole years of following our own will and relying upon ourselves. By this practice, faithfully observed, you will give Jesus more glory in a month than by any other practice, however difficult, in many years. True devotees to Mary have such uh, facility in carrying the yoke of Jesus Christ that they that they feel almost nothing of its weight. So the way of Marian consecration truly is a quick and easy, is quick and easy, relatively speaking. As St. Louis says elsewhere, it's like the difference between a sculptor who makes a statue with long weeks of hard labor, hammering away with a chisel, and another artist who makes the same statue quickly and easily by using a mold. Mary is the mold that forms us more perfectly, quickly and easily, into other images of Christ. We now close these reflections on the the wonderful benefits of Marian consecration by letting St. Louis describe how this way is also a secure path, meaning that as we walk it, we're particularly protected from and defended against evil. Mary puts herself around her true children and accompanies, accompanies them like an army in, battled array, in battle array. Shall a man who has an army of a hundred thousand soldiers around him fear his enemies? A faithful servant of Mary, surrounded by her protection, has still less to fear. This good mother would rather dispatch battalions of millions of angels to assist one of her servants than that it should ever be said that a faithful servant of Mary, who trusted in her, had 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 to succumb to the malice, the number, and the vehemence of his enemies. Day seven's prayer, and the last day of of St. Louis de Montfort. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, living living in Mary. Help us to praise you for such a quick, easy, and secure path to holiness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks for watching. God bless you.